Greetings fellow captains and welcome back to another episode of World of Warships with the Hive Hand. And today Azura Lane Wave 3 has dropped and we're going to start off with um, probably the one that's going to attract the most interest or maybe the second most. Uh, the Yukakazi is uh, going to be a firm favourite I expect. Uh, but the Azura Lane Montepella, uh, basically um, it's a Cleveland. Uh, it's one of the 27 Cleveland class ships uh, that were made. Um, main differences between the Montepella and the Cleveland. Uh, we'll have a quick run through. Obviously, Montepella is a premium ship, so it has all buffs uh, to earn potential, and it does it does earn really good credits. Um, but other than that, it's not really got any particularly. Uh, redeeming features so they both have the same hit points they both have the same armor both have the same torpedo reduction um, I put the same commander on to make sure we've got an accurate and fair comparison um, so firing range of 15.4 kilometers with the build that I'm using uh, seven and a half second reload um, and an 18 second uh, 180 degree turn time how does this compare to its sister, the Cleveland. Um, so exact same build, exact same loadout. Um, so 16.9 kilometer firing range, six and a half second uh, reload. Um, so the DPM and the range you can fire uh, is significantly better on the Cleveland. And the Cleveland probably being the most famous HE spammer in the game, or one of them, the Weemers. Uh, the Weemers getting up there. People have, people have seemed to have forgotten about the Cleveland ever since, uh, since that boat arrived. And so, yeah, the Cleveland's guns are faster firing. They have longer range, but they are less accurate. So the Montpella does have uh, have accuracy going for it. A defense, obviously, to Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland's very good. Montpella, exactly the same. Um, absolutely, uh, absolutely ridiculous. AA uh, fire hulls are the same, so the maneuverability, everything is the same. Detectability is um, exactly the same. Um, loadout wise, you get the same options. You can choose between sonar and defensive AA and heels and planes. Uh, as you can see here, yeah, basically uh, it's it's identical. Um, the the only reason I can find to purchase the Montepella is if you really, really like the Cleveland, but you're struggling for money. <laughs> um, or you're a massive weep and you're just an absolutely colossal, huge fan of the Zuri Lane. Um, right, okay, which brings us to the Commander. So I have actually been running the Zuri Lane Montepella. As you can see, we've got it up to Legendary 2. Uh, rank 12, um, Norman Scott for inspiration of Shell Grouping and uh, Augustus Renwald for reload of cruiser guns, uh, uh, re faster reload of cruisers main guns and uh, more AP shell damage. Uh, base trait is anti-air uh, which improves the anti-air guns firing range. Uh, you get a choice between burn it down or beyond range. Uh, honestly, burn it down probably the better choice. Um, or obviously, if you're divisioned with a carrier, so you know you're going to get carriers, you can always go for no fly zone. This is very much an anti anti aircraft uh, ship, which is, you know, uh, sort of indicative of its life. Uh, you get before it's too late or if not, if your second choice, uh, third choice, uh, velocity punch through, uh, or the all out assault skill. Uh, so this uh, increases the accuracy of the guns, uh, increases incoming fire dispersion, but also uh, it has that caveat that it does actually increase the incoming damage to your ship. Uh, get a choice then between a fixated or steer clear, and then fully packed refill station or equilibrium of power for your third for your for your legendary choice. Um, so cruiser commander wise it actually kind of suits the Montepella quite well it would probably be quite good on the uh, on the Cleveland as well um, but I don't see anything particularly special um, so if we look here uh, we'll take a quick look at Norman Scott so 
uh, essentially. Uh, first two rows are, are identical. If not, you're all before it's too late. Identical. Velocity, punch through. So you do get the option for punch through and armed and ready uh, instead of the all out assault perk. Uh, fixated, steer clear. So um, obviously, base trait is the difference where Norman Scott will improve your accuracy. Um, Azura Lane, Mont Mappella is it's just a better AA commander. Um, so like I said, it's only really worthwhile having if you play a lot on divisions, and you play a lot on divisions with carriers. Uh, otherwise, as you really in Montepella, isn't really any competition for uh, for any of the other commanders. There's nothing um, outright spectacular. It could be worthwhile putting on the Baltimore, um, because the Baltimore obviously has heavier armor, so it can uh, it can withstand uh, a bit more. Oh, well, I say a bit more, it can withstand a lot more damage um, with that uh, with that one uh, all out assault perk. Um, but yeah, nothing nothing particularly special about the commander, um, apart from the fact that it's an anime girl. <laughs> Other than that, um, yeah, that's that's about all I have to say in it. So uh, let's jump into battle and. Uh, and see how this thing plays. Why? Right, okay, so let's let's give this ship uh, a quick overview, then, shall we? Um, so, if you haven't played the Cleveland, uh, this ship is armed with twelve rapid fire, one hundred and fifty-two millimeter guns, uh, with good DPM and fire setting characteristics. Uh, great anti-aircraft values. Um, it's a very agile cruiser with good tight turning radius and very quick rudder shift. Uh, reasonably okay surface concealment and aerial concealment and uh, does have a good combination of uh, of tools available where you can actually run um, a uh, anti anti aircraft defensive fire and surveillance radar um, at the same time uh, cons of the ship uh, it definitely has a very modest um, a small hit pool and a sort of modest protection uh, 25 millimeters of armor pretty much all around um, but its citadel is quite well hidden and uh, quite difficult to uh, to actually over penetrate um, oh well relatively easy to over penetrate sorry it's quite hard to hit it's very uh, it's very low down um, Mozist reach and sort of floaty ballistics on a gun make her very effective at medium to short range um, even though she is used as a island camping spammer which I'll probably do quite a bit of. Uh, no torpedoes, um, its acceleration and its overall top speed are quite slow um, but apart from that um, she's you know she, she's she's a Cleveland uh, so, so uh, it, it's sort of well known uh, that the ship is an absolute nightmare to deal with um, particularly when it's perched up behind an island now this isn't really a great map for the Cleveland there are plenty of islands uh, but they're generally quite low uh, quite high sorry which doesn't give you a whole lot of uh, opportunity to uh, to set up and, uh, and camp away but uh, we are spotted but we do have this wall map, and there we go. We can see the the, uh, the, the fire setting characteristics uh, already coming into play. That's that's two fires from uh, you know a handful of salvos. Um, so the ship probably, I believe, it probably does have the second best DPM uh, for a cruiser at tier seven, uh, only being uh, being mildly picked out by the slightly faster reload uh, on. Her sister ship, uh, the Cleveland. As you can see, we, we've already set four fires. We've already already got ten thousand damage, and uh, and that is going to essentially continue to climb. Uh, we're not going to fire here uh, because, well, we don't want to get shot at broadside by a rumor. We luckily go undetected. There's just enough island to uh, to cover us. Uh, we do fire a shot, but we are accelerating. We're trying to get out of here. We're trying to get. Uh, around the side of that island so that Roma um, can't absolutely delete us after us doing what well you can see 27 28,000 the damage just keeps on uh, 
keeps on racking up and uh, and climbing really quickly. Thankfully, our DD has laid this smoke screen here, uh, which we're going to take the full opportunity to abuse. And my plan here, I knew the DD was around the corner, but I was hoping to get a fire on the Colorado, uh, North Carolina, sorry, um, uh, and then take out, I'll try my best to take out the DD. Uh, as you can see, the DD's fire torps, we're on full acceleration. This is what I mean about the ship being slow. Um, I've gone for rudder shift over propulsion mod, and yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it doesn't move quick. Honestly, uh, I think I may be more inclined in the future. I might swap it to uh, to take the propulsion mod because the rudder shift uh, is is already um, really good. But when you get when you get yourself caught up, when you're sort of stuck in a situation, the ability to uh, to accelerate and get the hell out of there uh, is is huge. Um, so we're we're just we're doing you know consistent damage. It's more fire damage that's. Uh, that's hurting the North Carolina than everything else. And the North Carolina tries to blind fire us. And look, see, look, like I know the smoke screen's running out. I need to get out of there. Uh, fortunately, our DD, and this genuinely is fortunately that the DD hit him with torps and uh, managed to sink in because we could be in uh, quite a bit of trouble there. And uh, this match is going really well. They're already down two battleships and one cruiser. Obviously, the North Carolina. Bizarrely, uh, the Roma that we've done uh, a, a shed load of damage to uh, is actually still alive. Um, so, I don't know what I was doing at the time whilst playing this battle. <laughs> Sorry about the uh, the odd noises in the background. That was probably me beeping in all fairness. Um, so, some Cleveland versus Montepella action. Uh, we're gonna get here. Um, th this is where the the floaty shells uh, sort of all comes into it. As you can see, the, the Cleveland's so far away that uh, that our fire is is reasonably ineffective, and uh, we're gonna have to sort of uh, we switch our focus to the Talon because the Talon the Talon is incredibly dangerous, um, and uh, even though it's down tiered. Um, it's still uh, it's still a very dangerous ship. Uh, Kagro looks like he's going to turn out. I might have botched that shot a little bit. And, uh, the, uh, we did actually catch it, uh, but it looks like the Kagro is going to catch our battleship with a bunch of torpedoes. And, uh, and there. But they have lost another cruiser in this time, which is essentially making it very easy for us. Uh, Cleveland's doing the absolutely correct thing despite how annoying it is i say he's doing the absolutely correct thing uh he is he knows he's been spotted um he knows there's a dd around because our dd finished off the cargo instead of hunting the dd uh he's decided to kite away um but oh, it's incredibly annoying <laughs> when uh, this is what i don't like about these uh, these classes of ships uh, essentially uh, I'm, I'm a quite an aggressive player. I like to get into the thick of battles, and it's an effective strategy. It works um, only because it's really the only thing I've got to fire at at the moment. Um, I was hoping the DD was gonna was gonna go and uh, try and keep him spotted, um, but then again, Cleveland does have radar, so it is kind of dangerous. Um, but he just needs to stay outside of that nine kilometers. Uh, and it'd be absolutely fine. And you see, uh, basically we're stuck in a now nah, fuck you, now nah, fuck you deadlock with uh, with setting fires. But uh, but I think the accuracy on the Montepella is uh, is definitely assisting me a little bit here. Um, so our DD is spotting him, um, but unfortunately that Roma that I've done scheduled damage to right at the start is still alive. He's actually the one spotting me, and. Uh, if if the Roma was paying a bit more attention, um, it really really hurt me. Um, but he's, he's just peeked around the island. But he's he's tunnel visioned. He's focused on whatever's in front of him, and uh, and unfortunately he wasn't able to uh, to make anything stick. Uh, so I'm going to slow down. I'm going to perch up behind this island. Like I said again, what I'm hoping is that my DD spots him. 
which will at least give me the first salvo advantage because essentially we're the same ship. Um, so having that first shot advantage could make all the difference between well, it could make the difference between uh, between winning the fight or, or losing the fight. And I guess this is uh, this is kind of a, a bit of a lesson in uh, in map awareness. Like I know my DD's there. I know my DD has the ability to spot him. Why rush out and potentially die? <laughs> uh, why not you know utilize your teammates that are around you and you know they have one battleship, one cruiser being this Cleveland and one destroyer left. And as you can see, the, the majority of our damage hasn't actually come from the DPM of our guns. It's been predominantly down to the 11 fires that we've already set. <laughs> so the Cleveland spotted, we're unspotted. So the DD has done exactly what we were hoping he was going to do. Uh, he's still in broadside, so we do switch to armor piercing. We take a shot because he is going to be behind that island and unable to spot us. Um, but this also tells us something else. This also tells us that their DD is to my left. Uh, he can't be in front, he can't be anywhere near the Cleveland. He was last spotted to the left. Um, and there, we've passed that island. So we've got an idea that you know the DD is floating around here somewhere. Uh, he spotted us again when we fired there, but we've made it safely into our DD smoke. And we're gonna use that to try and abuse the, abuse the Cleveland. You can see its armor is, is very weak, so our, our armor piercing, even though we're only firing our two front turrets, uh, is proving to be uh, pretty effective. And then, typical kiting, <laughs> kiting cruiser tactic of, uh, of, of turning out, but yeah, the whole team's closing in on him. This this guy is is for all intents and purposes done for. We fire up our sonar because you know. We're aware, we're sitting in smoke, we're shooting out the smoke, we know the DD is spotting us. Uh, but we also know it's a Benson, um, so it's gotta get it's gotta get kind of close to uh, to effectively uh, effectively do anything um, with its torpedoes. Um, but obviously we've got that big disadvantage of being really slow, so we don't want to hang around in this smoke any longer, just in case there's torpedoes come in because if I'm caught there when pants down standing still even though my sonar is going to spot the torps it's probably not going to go in our favor and uh, that's a that's our third fire that we've set up on this Cleveland now uh, he's playing around with his speed uh, but he, he's come almost to a stop uh, this salvo unfortunately didn't make it in time that Miyoko yoinked the kill um, so, right, it's just it's just us and a DD left. Uh, 97,000 damage, not bad. We're having a quick look at the map, having a quick puff on the uh, on the old vape as well, by the sounds of it. Uh, so, what I'm doing here, obviously, we can see the smoke screen. So, is he lurking in that smoke screen? Well, he's not because he's spotted, but is he lurking around that smoke screen? Um, I don't want to waste my radar, so my plan is to get into the cap. If the cap's contested, I know he's 100% in my radar range because there is a three kilometer boundary. Um, and there, our, uh, our hydroacoustic search uh, finally ends. Uh, he's not, but we fire it up anyway, and uh, well, catches us with a talk. Um, but he is now spotted. And uh, unfortunately, we missed with the first salvo. Second salvo, obviously, these, uh, the, the Montepella, same as the Cleveland, very good at dealing with destroyers because they have such a high DPM and their HE is quite good. Uh, we do knock his engine out, but we don't really do massive, significant damage. Now, I could go and chase the kill, but I'm not going to catch a Benham because, again, one of, the, one of the points that we noted about the ship was it's not particularly fast so the Benham's quite in a way he's probably just gonna outrun us um, so my my plan here is is effectively to to act as a blocker to protect the uh, ships behind me I just take the cap because unless a DD wants to fight at the end and you don't have a DD to chase him down which we don't 
it's just completely pointless. Um, it's just going to be a, a very, um, a very boring chase of cat and mouse uh, around the map. So he has got us spotted. We're assuming he's come up here. We are going to fire. Um, maybe you never know. You can always get lucky with. Uh, you can get lucky with random, uh, random shots. Um, but to to absolutely no at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, got the cap down to 50 seconds uh, remaining and he does he does actually make the bold move he fires his guns um, we are at pretty much his extreme range and uh, unfortunately he does actually hit us and he does actually reset the cap um, he fired troops from the back end of the island which is fine um, but with the range that he's at said this there's simply no point in chasing him i've got one minute 20 on my cooldown for my radar he's clearly not looking to fight uh there's an edinburgh here i'm assuming uh probably a smoke edinburgh although if he had radar that would have been that would have been really handy uh the edinburgh is probably quick enough to keep up with the benson um but yeah this battle's over uh, it's a clear victory. Countdown time is coming to the end. Chasing this guy is absolutely pointless. So we're just going to take the cap. We're just going to sit here. And yeah, see, I was bored of sitting there. Cap I was like, ah, oh, just see if I've received any hate mail uh, today. And uh, yeah, so we're, we're just about to cap. We have 15, 16, 15 seconds left. Yeah, 13, 12. Wait, what? 45 seconds left. Why? <laughs> the the obligatory sigh there from from me in the background. It's like, why Edinburgh? Why? All you've done is is basically given the given the Benson a kill. Um, that battleship over there. You've gone after a battleship. Battleship on his own with uh, with no support. Benham kiting away. Absolutely nothing any of us going to do about it. Uh, so why try to win harder? Honestly, what's the point? And all that uh, that, that Edinburgh achieved by trying to win harder was giving the Benham, Benham another kill on the enemy team and sort of reinforcing them. Well, if I run away. Uh, but yeah, uh, that... Um Not the ideal match, but a good game all round. Um, Mayoko had a very good game uh, with us as well and uh, you can see the Ben and that managed to uh, to escape there at the end so I do hope you enjoyed this video and as always until next time take care